Can an international student from overseas studying in the United States on an F1 student visa work? And if so, what are the conditions? Hi, I'm Jim Hacking, immigration lawyer practicing law throughout the United States out of our office here in St. Louis, Missouri. International students come to the United States and obviously they have to be able to pay for their tuition and their living expenses. And the law does allow in three different ways for international students to work in the United States. There are a lot of restrictions on it and they have to be very careful not to violate the terms of their F1 student status because keep in mind that the international students who come on F1s are subject to regulations regarding work and they're expected that the reason that they're here and what they're doing with most of their time is going to school. But the law does allow for some work to be done and one thing to keep in mind is that at, at its very basic level, the F-1 student visa allows students to work on campus for up to 20 hours a week. That's considered part-time work, and it has to be at the university on campus or at a closely affiliated uh, place. So, for instance, international students can work for the food service industry uh, that manages the food at the university, or they can work at the campus bookstore, or they can work at various locations throughout the campus, but they can't work for, let's say, McDonald's or off-campus um, in the immediate vicinity. It has to be on campus and it has to be uh, at the school. So that's for every international student. They can always work 20 hours a week um, part-time during the school year, and they are allowed after a year to work um, during the summer on a full-time basis. And that reminds me to mention that as an F1 student, you can't work your first year, so it's only after your second year that you're able to work in the United States on an F1 visa on that part-time, 20-hour basis. The second way that international students can work is through what's called Curricular Practical Training, or CPT. CPT is uh, work that is done sort of in internships or externships or practicums that are sort of part of the course of study. So let's say that someone is studying to be a speech therapist and the university generally requires speech therapists to work uh, outside the university for an extended period of time in order to qualify to graduate. In other words, that it's part of the study. So under CPT, the student can work off campus and they can work full time. The law does allow for that. You have to apply for CPT with your international student office. You have to be issued a new I-20 by the uh, international student office that reflects your request and your intention to do CPT. It has to be related to your field and it can't just be some random work. It has to be something that's towards your major. One thing to keep in mind about CPT is that if you do a full 12 months of CPT, then that's going to prevent you from getting the benefit of the third type of work that we're going to discuss in just a minute, which is called OPT. So just keep in mind that if you're going to work full-time at CPT, which the law does allow, you need to make sure that you uh, don't do it for more than a year, or at least if you are going to do it for more than a year, that you've thought through the consequences of that. All right, so the last way that students can work on their F1 international student uh, visa is by getting what's called optional practical training, OPT. An OPT is a way that students can work after graduation while remaining on their F-1 student visa. OPT allows students to work in their field of study for an employer to test drive them out, I'd like to say, to, to see if it's a good fit, to see if the employer may want to allow the student to come back uh, on an H-1B work visa down the road. And so OPT is good for 12 months, so after you graduate, uh, you can work for up to 12 months on OPT. It's sort of a complicated process. You have to deal with your international student office and you have to uh, fill out some paperwork to get an amended I-20 and you're going to need to demonstrate that the the job is related to your field of study. You're going to have to explain that to your international student officer. Okay, so then you get the OPT and you're able to work and then you have to apply for an I-765 work card and you can't work until that work card comes and you're able to work for up to 12 months. We have other videos that discuss the STEM extension, so students uh, that work in the STEM fields, which are science, technology, engineering, and math, you can get an extension currently at 17 months, but soon to be 24 months, uh, that allows you to continue working on OPT for up to three full years uh, if you're in one of those fields. So check out our other videos on that, but if you have any questions about 
uh, work incidental to your F1 student visa, that 20 hour a week uh, part-time gig on campus that we discussed, or curricular practical training, CPT, or about OPT, feel free to give us a call at 314-961-8200, or you can always email us at info at hackinglawpractice.com. And if you like this video, please make sure to click on the subscribe button. We try to update the YouTube channel often and regularly, and we hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot.